Colorado is a Democratic stronghold, but could it be getting worse? Could Colorado be a Democratic socialist stronghold? Yeah. Let's talk about that. Instead of focusing on winning arguments, we're teaching the basic fundamentals of sales and marketing and how we can use them to win in the world of politics, teaching you how to meet people where they're at on the issues they care about. Welcome to The Brian Nichols Show. Well, hey there, folks. Brian Nichols here on The Brian Nichols Show. Thank you for joining us on, of course, another fun-filled episode. I am, as always, your humble host, joining you from our lovely Cardio Miracle Studios here in Eastern Indiana. The Brian Nichols Show is powered by our friends over at Amp America. If you're looking for all the news that you need to know without the corporate media bias or fluff, head over to ampamerica.com. Get the news you need without that added bias. Plus, by the way, I write a few articles over there, and I think they're pretty darn good. So go ahead, check them all out and more at ampamerica.com. Also, The Brian Nichols Show and yours truly, powered by our studio sponsor, Cardio Miracle. Now, folks... We're a year plus into the Cardio Miracle Adventure here on The Brian Nichols Show. And if you've been a longtime listener, you've heard me tout this every single episode. If you're joining us for the first time today, well, get ready. Because I am here to tell you that the Cardio Miracle difference is 100% real. Now, what is Cardio Miracle? It's the best heart health supplement in the world, powered by nitric oxide. It helps improve your blood pressure. It will help improve those restless nights of sleep. Plus, for yours truly, I've seen a benefit at the gym having more of a pump, plus a slew of other amazing benefits. And uh, here's the secret, folks. You, the amazing members of the Brian Nichols Show audience, can jump on board with literally zero risk. How how so? Well, first of all, if you use code TBNS at checkout by clicking the link here in the show notes or following the link in the video description, you're going to get 15% off your order. That sounds great, but don't worry. There's more because not only are you going to get 15% off your order, but you also have a 100% money back guarantee. So folks, you literally have nothing to lose. And if you've been listening to me and you're like, okay, Brian, that sounds great. You know, you're the host of the show. Don't take my word for it. Take the word of literally the hundreds of other folks here in the Brian Nichols show audience. That's right. You guys right here in the audience who have already jumped on the cardio miracle bandwagon. Heck go reach out to the tens of thousands of folks out there who have already experienced cardio miracle difference for themselves. I guarantee your heart will thank you. One more time, Cardio Miracle, the best heart health supplement in the world. Use code TBNS for 15% off your order. All right, folks. Well, there's your your heart uh, medicine for today, but maybe the news and the teaser made your heart a little sad. And that was because if you live in the great state of Colorado, yeah, it's been a democratic stronghold for a while, but what if it's actually getting worse? What if, despite having the most libertarian governor in Jared Polis, Yes, the actual uh, reality uh, with boots on the ground in Colorado is that not just Democrats are taking over, but Democratic socialists are taking over and turning Colorado into a stronghold. Whatever can those Coloradans, Coloradians do? I probably said that wrong, and I'm going to be corrected by our guest. Joining us here on the Brian Nichols Show from Colorado, Joe DiBiazio. Welcome to the program. How are you doing? Great. How are you doing? Doing quite well. We're recording here, uh, peek behind the curtain on a Thursday after hours. I have family coming into town. It's a good, it's a good day, my friend. Uh, but with that, thank you for joining us on the show. Looking forward to digging all uh, into all things Colorado. That is, but Joe, before we start addressing the elephant in the room, is Colorado turning into a democratic socialist stronghold? Do us a favor, introduce yourself here to the Brian Nichols Show audience. Why are you raising the alarm? And what the heck can Coloradans, Coloradians do? <laughs> well, Coloradans, right? Um, you know, it, it's simply you got to get out there and you just got to stand your ground. Um, you know, Democratic Socialists of America are, are taking over the General Assembly and not by being elected in, but through appointment. You know, and if a Democrat decides to step down from the GA, they're just going to fill it with a DSA member. And, and, and these folks, you know, they slam themselves in committees. They are just going after your rights every which way. You know, and, and, and 
you know, the irony is if you're paying attention to the to the news out here, you'll see that, you know, on the CU campus that uh, a lot of the pro-Palestinian supporters are out there voicing their concerns. And they were ushered off the, the campus for a little while because they were camping and there's camping bans on the campus. It was, it, was, it was pretty funny. You know, they're like, hey, this is this is an infringement of our First Amendment rights. You know, it's like. <laughs> Welcome to the club, guys. <laughs> and there, fam. We know how you feel. Only, um, sorry, private property rights actually exist, but that might be a different conversation for a different day. Yeah, right, right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe. So talk to us about these democratic socialists because here, let's let's take a step back. I think what happens is more often than not, more folks on the, when we're just, you know, for the sake of the conversation today, we're going to lump big L and small L libertarians in the same camp on the right. I'm sorry. I know some of you folks are going to have your hair burst into flames hearing that, but I think that's a, a, a general rule we can put into place. But when you look at the left, and I'm going to, again, use very loose phraseology here for the left, but we think of the Democratic Party, we think of progressives, we think of socialists. And I think when more people think of Democrats today, they associate Democrats with that socialist progressive wing. And yet, when I think back to Democrats, because I'm an old man over here, Joe, I am old enough to remember when I would hang out with Democrats back when I was growing up, and they were pretty much normal people with normal politics. Like, yeah, they maybe disagreed on tax rates and, uh, you know, some, some minute uh, details versus the GOP or their friends on the right. It really was, uh, what's the old term? I think it was uh, uh, oh, the old yeah. speaker of the house. They're, they're the same side of the, or the two sides of the same coin, right? Yeah. But where we are today, my humble opinion is that we've seen that, that schism really grow, that, that divide grow. So now the average Democrat has become more of a socialist, which is definitely concerning. But let's look at the Democrats, those old school Democrats. And specifically, Joe, let's look at it through the lens of Colorado in particular, because I'm sure that the socialist takeover of the Democratic Party itself hasn't necessarily been welcomed by some of those more traditional, dare we say, like the, the, the blue dog Democrats, you know, the, the old, I want my labor union and I want an affordable tax rate. And that was about it versus, you know, hey, we want hyper progressive everything that's out there. So what's been the reaction from those old school Dems there in Colorado? You know, I wish I could uh, speak on behalf of them um, in my community. So I'm the vice president of a metro district out here in Aurora. Um, you know, that's that that position right there. It's kind of interesting because I, I get to speak with the community a lot. And we do have a lot of anti-tax Democrats in this community. And we have a lot of like pro-tax Republicans. It's 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 really it's kind of a, a very populist mix of, of mindsets. But if I were to speak on their behalf, I, I would assume that they're probably not exactly thrilled of the DSA takeover because they do seem very moderate. Um, a lot of them are, you know, they're they're pro-gun, they're pro-Second Amendment Democrats. I mean, it's that old blue dog Democrat mindset, you know, like a lot of these guys used to work on farms. They used to work on ranches and they, uh, you know, they, they, they do believe in the Bill of Rights. They do believe in your your individual freedoms. So I, I couldn't imagine that they're exactly happy about this takeover that's happening. And just to be clear, it's not it's not a huge takeover, but uh, it's 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 enough people who are DSA members who are who are kind of consolidating that they can get into these committees, you know, and, and, and really just turn things upside down. And everything's going to have to go to a it's going to have to go to the courts is what it boils down to. Well, I was going to say it, it's not a democratic socialist takeover and stronghold yet. And let me put the yeah, right. little the caveat there, right? Because, uh, and by the way, this, okay, a little bit of a rant. Um, this has been something I have been butting my head up against with big L libertarians and, and frankly, smaller libertarians for that matter of the, uh, like, well, we can't react to something until it happens. So like, well, we, we shouldn't be pushing x policy because well x hasn't happened yet or okay here i'll give you a real life example sorry audience if you get uncomfortable sorry joe if this makes you uncomfortable but like the whole drag queen story hour thing right like i can sit there and be like i don't think that's a good thing and then democrats are like oh why what, what, what's the worst that's happened you're, you're thinking about all these worst case things that could happen and i'm like yes yes i am i'm, I'm a dad I, I i don't think that this is a good a good approach to, to dealing with these issues, but also I think just pretending that this isn't an issue isn't a good idea either. And so we, we, I think we as libertarians, we sometimes are allergic to solutions 
unless the problems are are slapping us across the face. So I, I say that because I look at Colorado and I was out to Colorado a couple of years ago. You know, I went to visit you guys in Denver. I had a good time. It was nice. But like it wasn't a socialist stronghold yet. And I don't want to see Denver or Colorado become a socialist stronghold. I got a lot of good buddies out in Colorado. So what what do you see, Joe? Here's my question to you. Like, what do you see as a means to stop a potential takeover? You know, it hasn't officially happened yet, but if it's on its way, if, if we're starting to see you know the, the chinks in the armor, right? What what can big L libertarians, small L libertarians, heck, even those folks on the right in the GOP, what would you recommend from a prescription standpoint to not just deal with the symptoms of this? but actually deal with the underlying causes. Well, let me, let me start off by giving a shout out to Hannah Goodman. She's the state chair. You know, she established a strong strategy where, uh, you know, she got with Dave Williams, who was the GOP chair and they established a Liberty pledge and, um, you know, GOP candidates, they can sign our Liberty pledge. And if it's a, if it's a race that they really don't want a libertarian running against them and it's partisan, if they sign that libertarian pledge, we'll, we'll, we'll back down, you know, and, and that puts us in a position where, we're not exactly splitting votes. And, and I know that it's not necessarily a popular um, strategy amongst all libertarians, but the point is, is that it's a strategy and we're, we're starting to play the game. And I, I really appreciate Hannah for recognizing that, that she's, she's ready to get the, the process started. And um, that also means that they're going to back down from nonpartisan races. So it, it has enabled me to sit down with the uh, GOP chair in Arapahoe County and have conversations about, you know, how, we can help her fill in areas where she may not have strength. So perfect, uh, perfect example of that is um, for Arapahoe County Commissioner District 5, we're running Alicio Gonzalez as a libertarian, and he, he got backed up by the Republican Party because they don't, they don't stand a chance in that district, but a libertarian does. So, um, you know, th that's, that's how we're going to start doing it. That's the way to do it. And we also recognize that, well... <laughs> I believe I'm not going to say that it's a universal fact, but I believe that establishment and um, non-establishment Republicans are are pretty fractured in the state. So it's it's really given the Democratic Party the ability to just slide in and do whatever they want to do. But, Joe, libertarians, Republicans working together, what what are you going to say next cats and dogs working together, too? Like, what is this? monstrosity that you're promoting here you really think that libertarians and republicans can find common ground yeah i think libertarians and democrats can find common ground too you know i think, wow. I, think I think libertarians can find common ground with a lot of, i know i know it's like and i'm sure every libertarian who's listening to this right now is rolling their eyes they're like oh listen this guy he's just a you know republican light or something you know i don't know but uh, I, I just I think we could all work together. You know, I mean, the, the bottom line is, is the way I see it is it's all about individual liberties. And, you know, the second you try to take away somebody's right to be an individual, you know, you're just you're just calling on all kinds of problems. Well, Joe, how much of the the the, the split that I was just obviously tongue in cheek re referencing, like how dare Republicans and Democrats or Republicans and libertarians work together. But like how much of that perceived split is because we are so polarized versus what you kind of mentioned here is that it used to be an understanding of like, Hey, we disagree, but at least we have, you know, some common values. We live in the same area. Like, is it that we've gotten online far too much and we we've seen those differences get ramped up from like, you know, they were just differences to now, like they're the biggest differences in the world or is it something else? Well, I, I mean, I actually, it's kind of funny. My personal opinion is that there's polarization, but we're polarized further away from the way the Democrats and Republicans have structured themselves in Colorado. How so? You know, and well, let me give you an example. So, you know, we had 38,000 immigrants come to the state. Um, Denver's a sanctuary city. Uh, there's all kinds of issues around the budgets. And, you know, I think Denver just cut like $8.4 million from the police forces. I'll, you know, it's like defund the police. It's defund this. We're not laying people off. We're just paying them $0 an hour, you know, like it's just gotten out of hand. But um, when, when I asked the question, okay, well, if we have all these folks here and we own businesses, how do we hire them? How do I hire a person legally into a business? Well, I can't. Step two, let's look at this. 
if minimum wage in Denver is around $18 an hour, am I going to pay somebody $18 an hour to do, you know, unskilled labor? Probably not. So there's really no way to get these people to work. So they're here. Well, when I spoke to the Republicans, and I'm not going to name drop anybody or say anything, their, their solution is to give them free stuff so they can win them over so they become Republicans. I'm like, wow, that sounds kind of interesting. That sounds like the Democratic strategy to me, too. So the strategy is just a, a census strategy, in my opinion, where I don't think libertarian. And it's funny because, you know, they're like, well, we're closed border. And I'm like, well, I'm open border. I, I, I you know, give me your poor, you're tired or hungry. I'm, I'm happy to have people here. But we need to we need to follow the rules on how they come in here. We can't just open the borders and let people storm, you know, the capital. That's not really the right way to do it. So we, we can kind of agree on that. But we disagree on how we put these people to work, because once I said, well, we should be if they're going to be here, we should be able to put them to work. And uh, the answer is like, well, we don't want them taking our jobs, but we're happy to give them free stuff. So they vote for Republicans. It's just it's the same thing. I mean, it's one and the same. <laughs> it's rough, man. Um, well, especially when you look at how tough it is to just have conversations nowadays. Right. Like and I've seen this on social media. I'm sure you as well, Joe, have seen this like. You, you make a comment like, I like oranges. And then you have 14 people come in and say, why do you hate apples so much? Don't you know that apples have such a hard time going from being a little you know, tiny bud to a big old apple on the tree? Don't, don't, don't Are you discriminatory against apples? And it turns into just a cluster, right? Versus just people having differences and not having those differences mean that you hate someone else like i believe x that's all that means it doesn't mean i hate other group it doesn't mean that i don't like other group it means that i have this value i like this i prefer this and that's okay but then we go into the dangerous area of well what i like is things that other people do or don't do right so if i'm you know a, a democrat like i don't want people walking outside without being vaccinated and having a mask on because they might hurt me or on the other side of the aisle, you know, Republicans, I don't want those kids smoking the marijuana because well, you know, it impacts me in some way, shape or form. Doesn't it? Like, and that's the <laughs> argument, right? And this is, and this is where it turns into a, a, not a matter of, I have preferences. It's, I have preferences that you need to, to, to almost, echo back, right? You need to mirror my preferences. Otherwise you're, you're offensive. You're offensive to me, not because you're overtly calling, you know, my beliefs, you know, wrong or bigoted, but because you simply aren't reflecting back what I want you to do. Yeah. A hundred percent, you know, and that's exactly what it always is, right? It's like, well, if you don't fit into this box that I think you should fit into, then you're my enemy. And, you know, and, and, it's funny because, you know, we get people out there who might disagree with me and that's OK. We can disagree. We can we can have a, a conversation about it, but we probably agree on a lot more things than we disagree with. That's just the way it normally works. So, yeah, you do get people who, who want to shout at you saying like, well, you said oranges, so you must hate apples and bananas and pears. And they start naming everything off. And you're like, man, it, <laughs> we're just talking about this one thing here, you know, like. You know, the bottom line is, is as a human being above everything else, I actually just feel really bad for that 38, those 38,000 people who came to Colorado and they have no recourse. They, 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 they're just political levers. That's all it is. You know, and it's just so sad to me. It's like, man, you know, you know if they're going to be here, how do they get to work? How do they, how do they contribute to society? I don't know. I don't have that answer. Well, and, and that is unfortunately the direct outcome of very, dare I say, uh, I'll, I'll just be gentle, not thought out uh, government policy, right? And, and maybe maybe there's some folks who could make the argument that it's not just not thought out. It's, it's maybe a little bit more thought out and maybe a little uh, not so good. Uh, maybe it's a targeted uh, approach here, but using people as pawns, right? And that goes to what you're referring here, Joe, like people being leveraged as political tools, as political pawns in some large game of, of politic life. I, it just, I, I don't know, like with it being so polarized online, it seems like this has been escalated to every day. There's something new happening, whether it's 
college kids protesting on college campuses, uh, you know, whether it was the Occupy Wall Street, the, the, the Summer of Love protests and lockdowns and all that just insanity. There just seems to be always something on the you know the, the forefront of our american discourse that just gets everybody all riled up and angry and i i guess here's my question what can we do joe what can we do to not just find common ground not just quell some of the angst but how do we as a society get back to functioning again in a in a kind of just okay way cuz I don't want to see, like, I, I've heard the arguments, like I've had uh, Daniel Miller here on the show. He promotes Texit, which is, uh, you know, the, the first step towards a national divorce. I've seen folks who they they feel that we're on a slippery slope path right down towards civil war. I've heard other folks say everything's fine. Nothing's wrong. And yet it kind of feels like things are wrong. So I don't know. So Joe, what, what, what do you see as a, just a common sense way for us to stop the polarization, stop the fighting both with each other, but also internally and get back to focusing on the things that I don't know, actually matter. I don't, I don't really see a solution um, in the short term. You know, my, oh. my <laughs> I think I, I'm almost like, and I'm not going to say I'm an accelerationist because I don't believe in, I don't necessarily believe that that's what we, we need, but um I think that people aren't going to have a change of heart until it's bad, until it's truly bad. And, you know, it's getting there, but it's not like Argentina bad. You know what I mean? And uh, I, I would love to see somebody like Javier Malay in, in the U.S., uh, but I just don't think people have felt the real pain yet. You know, we we are privileged to live in this country still. You know, we do we do have we you know, obviously we have our, you know, our problems with this country and we we. You know, there, there are problems with this country, but uh, by and large, I think uh, we've been very prosperous over the past hundred and some odd years. You know, I just I think it's got to get worse before it'll get better. Well, and, and in that time frame of it getting worse, there are things you can do like what you did. You ran for local office, by the way, as a big L libertarian and you won. So, Joe, what what does that look like in terms of actually running for office? finding success and now having a say in your community, especially being that third party. Well, I want to jump in here. Um, so as chair of Arapahoe County, one of the things that I brought up at a, at a, at a meeting was that there was over 200 special districts in, in Arapahoe alone that had two to three vacancies on each board. So my own community, Whispering Pines, there was a vacancy. So I wasn't elected. I was appointed. Um, but I just threw my name in the hat. And, and that's all you have to do. You just throw your name in the hat and you get appointed to the board. And um, you have control over that mill levy, you know, with with this uh, metro district out here. And, you know, it's not it's not, you know, we got like 500 houses in this community. You know what I mean? I'm not like some political player. I'm certainly not Aaron Lamb. You know what I mean? He's the mayor of Keensburg out here and he's a he's a big L libertarian. And, He's just knocking it out of the park. That's the real player in Colorado, in my opinion. But um, we, uh, you know, we're, we're small fries, but that's how you get involved. We start building the bench from the ground up. So I reach out to libertarians and say, hey, you know, can you just jump on a, a, a special district board, you know, control a mill levy? You know, we talked about, you know, backstage, we were talking about, um, you know, the bonds out here went from seven and a quarter down to 5%. So we we, we, lo we were able to lower property taxes in, in wake of the repeal of the Gallagher Act. Um, we pulled from our reserves and we went from a mill levy of 87 down to 56, I believe. So that was, um, that, that happened this year. So my property taxes went from 14,000 down to 11,000. I was, I was pretty happy about that. And I think, uh, I think a lot of people in the community were pretty happy about that too. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, three thousand dollars off your your property tax bill that that might do it, Joe. Yeah, you know, and and so you know, being a big old libertarian, you know, I think most people just it was kind of funny because you know the haters in the neighborhood to keep me off. They said I was too progressive. It was pretty funny. Yeah, that was like, we're calling you're too progressive while you're cutting our taxes. Wait, it, well what? they didn't. Want they didn't want me in because uh, so I do the contracts and I have the uh, the clubhouse and the pool. Right. And uh, the way that I see it is that the clubhouse falls under a, 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 it's it's an SC or it's a SOE. It's a state owned enterprise. It's commercially zoned property and uh, it's owned by the government. 
but we don't have anybody who rents it out. It's just like, we don't have vendors. We don't have anything. I'm like, can we bring in some vendors to sell coffee or something <laughs> so, and make a deal for 10% of the revenues to bring in more, more revenue for the community so we could further lower property taxes or maybe do those maintenance things that we need to do without hiking up property taxes. And, and it's funny. It's just like, people are like, this is absurd. There's just too much risk. We're going to get sued. And it, it was pretty funny. So. Oh, Joe, we're going towards our final thoughts here, and I'll, I'll kick things off before I turn it over to you. But I just want, I want to piggyback on that. So uh, right over there, literally over there, is another podcast studio. And that's my good buddies, Jeremiah Morrill and Dakota Davis. They have a podcast here locally in the uh, greater eastern Indiana area called The Boss Hog of Liberty. And uh, what they do is they interview local candidates who – or not local candidates uh, – that's one piece of the puzzle, but local business owners, um, candidates, you, you name it, they have them on the show, but it's, it's a very local politics podcast. And one of the things that blows me away every time they, they have like a candidate series is that every candidate, Republican and Democrat alike, seems to think that the only way to increase revenue for our tiny community here of 20,000 people is to raise taxes. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, gosh, darn it, guys. Like, what are we doing here? Why is it always that you need to feel that you need to raise taxes in order to bring revenue into the, the community? Maybe, you know, making a more business-friendly environment or making it a, a more tax-friendly environment would bring more people in, thus helping incentivize, you know, economic activity in the community, which by its very nature, helps bring more dollars to the community. So it just, it, it pains me to hear that this is the tired and true standard approach to dealing with issues. The status quo solution, raise taxes, put more money at it by taking the money from the people who are using the service. I don't know. We're going to make it work though, right? That's the approach. And it's broken. We know it's broken. We look at our communities and we see our crumbling infrastructure. I need to drive down Main Street here in my town to only uncover like 15 potholes recently dug up because our water main breaks were so bad. So like we're seeing the impacts of a broken status quo system to air quote get revenue to pay for these different areas that frankly, if the government's going to claim responsibility on, they have an obligation to do, to do that part, but they're doing so, so poorly. So if we want things to get better, if we want different ideas to come to the table, much like what Joe has done here in his community, it starts with us actually getting involved, bringing different ideas to the table, standing up and saying, Hey, you know what? Maybe we can do things a different way. And that's okay. Yes, there might be risk, but you know what? It's a lot less risky than knowing that every single member of our community is going to have their taxes increase, thus harming the ability for them to, what, live their lives, invest, feel comfortable in retirement, whatever it may be, we have a chance to bring a different solution to the table. But it starts with us standing up and saying, hey, there might be a different way. That's my final thoughts for today. Joe, what do you have for us on your end? And also, where can folks go ahead find you continue the conversation over on the social medias and more. Yeah. You can find me, um, on my, my X handle, just, uh, Joe underscore DiBiasio. And then, um, I changed the name to dystopian daydream. And then I got a picture of Javier Malay with the, uh, chainsaw that says afuera. So you'll know that's me. Um, <laughs> you know, my final thoughts are pretty simple, you know, get involved, you know, just, even if you just go out to, you know, your, your local affiliate, you know, and, and, you know, meet with like-minded people, you'll see that, uh, a lot of us, a lot of us, you know, we, we, we believe in the same things. We want the same outcome. We just want people to be left alone for the most part. And, uh, I think a lot of people are really libertarian deep down inside. They just, you know, they just are kind of, I guess, under the, the spell where you got to vote for a Democrat or Republican because a libertarian will never win. Well, it's starting to look more and more like we do have a chance. Meet people where they're at on the issues they care about. Don't make issues a Republican issue, a Democrat, or a Libertarian issue. Just make them issues and meet the people where they're at with solutions on those issues that they care about. That's what we promote here at The Brian Nichols Show. And Joe, I'm so thankful to have some folks like you in elected office actually doing just that. So folks, if you enjoyed today's episode, you know the drill. Go ahead and give it a share. When you do, please tag yours truly at B Nichols Liberty. You can find me on Twitter slash X as well as Facebook. And as uh, Joe mentioned, go look for the Javier Malay 
chainsaw wielding, tax slashing, a fuera saying uh, guy that he is. Look for that profile photo. We'll make sure we include the link for Joe's social media in the show notes as well. And uh, by the way, folks, for uh, the, the way you can find the show, you found us in some way, but believe it or not, there's other ways you can find us in whatever way you didn't find us today. I know that didn't make sense, but hear me out. Video and audio versions of the show. If you're joining us on the podcast version of the show, well, guess what? There's a video version. So head over to your favorite video, uh, whatever platform that may be, YouTube, Rumble, Twitter, uh, Facebook, Sovereign, wherever you go ahead and consume your video content, hit that subscribe button, hit that little notification bell. Also head down below into the comments. We want to hear your thoughts. So if you are in a local community, which I know you are because you're a person living somewhere, uh, please go ahead and let us know what do you think would be the outcomes of libertarian solutions for your respective community? Do you think they'd be embraced? Do you think they'd be rejected? And if so, what is it? Is it the message or is it the actual solution? We want to hear your thoughts. Continue the conversation down below in the comments. And if you watched us on that video version of the show, but you say, hey, you know what? I don't have you know 40 minutes, 30 minutes to sit down and watch a full episode on the video version. Can't I just take this on the go? Yes, you can. For their favorite podcast catcher, go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Music, I Like Podcast Addict, wherever it may be. Hit subscribe to The Brian Nichols Show. Hit download all unplayed episodes of The Brian Nichols Show, namely because we have over 840 episodes here of the show, and only the podcast and the website have the entire archives. So you want to check all those episodes out and more, head over to briannicholsshow.com or, like I said, in your favorite podcast catcher. And then uh, one final plug, and that is, folks, please support the folks who support us, and that is our phenomenal sponsors. So whether it's our studio sponsor, Cardio Miracle, our awesome other sponsors like our Indie Emporium, Michael Scott 2024. 40 day plan shirt. Go ahead and check that out over at indieemporium.com. Plus, we have our good friends over at uh, Liquid Freedom, which, uh, by the way, right about here, our Liquid Freedom Energy Tea from Blood of Tyrants. Uh, I am a huge fan of this because, you know, Joe, I, I go on long road trips and, you know, we all, we all need that little pick me up. You go to the grocery store or you go to the, the um, gas station and you grab a monster or a Red Bull. I'm going to challenge you, not just you, Joe, but the, the folks listening. Look at the back of that can. I want you to be able to confidently pronounce five ingredients in that ingredients list beyond like things you know, like water and stuff like that. Just try to pronounce them. I guarantee your brain's going to be like, uh oh, why are we putting this into our bodies? Versus, you ready for this? It's like, it's like seven ingredients filtered water, natural flavors, yerba mate extract, citric acid, fruit and vegetable juice monk fruit juice concentrate, and stevia leaf extract. Seven ingredients. It's all phenomenal. It tastes good, and it gives you the energy you need. Um, plus, it's being uh, created by some libertarian folks out there as well. So support a liberty company who's creating a great product like Liquid Freedom. And heck, get some, uh, some discounts applied. Use code TBNS for your Liquid Freedom as well. Okay, we paid some bills. I'm tired. It's been a long day. Joe, what last words do you have for the audience today as we wrap things up? Just get out there and do it, guys. Just get out there and do it. Get involved. Love it. There's the call to action. Get out there and do it. If you don't, Joe and I will be very disappointed. So with that being said, Brian Nichols signing off here on The Brian Nichols Show for Joe DiBiazio. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to The Brian Nichols Show. Find more episodes at briannicholsshow.com.